Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Saturday, June the 13th, and it is 7.54 p.m. Um, I, I was sent a video in my email that was mirrored on the Exalted Lamb 1, I think it was, channel. So I hit the link to go to the original. All right, the original video is called Dream, Obama, and the Red Wedding. This lady, I, I'm shown as subscribed, but I don't remember ever seeing her but then <laughs> that's that's nothing new i might have seen her last week <laughs> the name of her channel is yahushua's walk with me she only has 712 subscribers uh she has uh, she talks about at the six minute mark she gives Obama's red wedding joke. Does anybody remember that? Um, let's see. Let me clip on this link. Uh, listen to this. You can't say it, but you know it's true. Good evening, everybody. It's so arrogant. It is an honor to be here at my last, and perhaps the last, White House Correspondents Day. <laughs> you all look great. The end of the Republic has never looked better. I do apologize. I know I was a little late tonight. I was running on CPT. And you know who you are, Republicans. Wait a minute. I uh, think that's what she meant to go to the six minute mark for the joke. So I'm moving it up. And you know who you are, Republicans. In fact, uh, I think we've got Republican Senators uh, Tim Scott and uh, Cory Gardner. Uh, they're in the House, which reminds me. Security, bar the doors. Judge Merrick Garland, come on out. We're going to do this right here, right now. You didn't look. It's like the Red Wedding. I think it's true. But it's not just Congress. Even some foreign leaders. They so I'll stop there. That was that was a reference to the Game of Thrones. He made references references to that a number of times. If y'all remember when he was in office, he had his uh, one of those rooms. I don't know. Might have been the Oval Office set up or maybe photoshopped with the bow on the coffee table and the throne the chair like the throne that's from that that uh i think it was an hbo series the game of thrones i'm not sure because i never watched it uh and it was just very wicked looking well anyway so she makes reference to that <laughs> And let's see. Hello, everybody. Oh, sorry. I had to go back because I clicked on that link. Anyway, uh, you, you'll want to hear this. And, uh, you know, you hear dreams. And sometimes you think, oh, that might have been from God. I don't know. Yeah, this, this was. And he allowed her to be shot along with everybody else and she felt it and died and saw darkness. 
weeks and she started crawl, crawl, calling out for Jesus. But she was telling everybody to repent on their way down into this dungeon-like place. Uh, like an unfinished or destroyed garage, she said. Like an, under a business. Anyway, um, the Lord allowed her to feel the darkness that people who do not repent are going to feel. And people... That, that's what it, she's very upset at this point because it was so real and then she asked the Lord why why did why did it go that way why did you allow me to feel darkness what it, what do I got to do you know like she was thinking I'm not ready to go. I, I'm going to go to hell. Do I need to repent or what? But she was saying, what do I need to do? And he said something like, uh, I got you, baby, or I've got you, my baby, or something. And, yeah, we're his children. We are his children. She had that dream on the 11th. She said he's always talked to her in numbers. The exact time she woke up. She asked in the exact time she woke up. Because by the time she got herself together and looked at the clock, it was like 3.50 something. And she said, Lord, what, what time exactly did I wake up? And he told her. I think it was 3.52. I believe it was. She tells you what it was when she looked it up. And it confirmed the dream. It was total destruction or something. or I don't remember exactly. But she tells you the number. And what, what it meant. And then she reads the scriptures. He led her to. And it's just something that is worth your time. It's getting a little dark. Well, maybe not on my face. Let me see. Ah, that's working. But I'm almost done. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this. And over myself, my computer, my internet connection, and over each and every one of you. I pray that you will pass on her video. Share it. Put it on your Facebook. People need to know they have to repent. They have to do the things we were called to do or they won't make it they won't be holy enough people are living in the world too much they love their stuff their kids their husbands their whole life they're happy sure they might have a uh, some little illness that gives them a pain in the neck or a pain in the back or whatever or you know whatever nobody's life is perfect but still if you've got help and the money you need and family and your family gatherings and everybody brings a dish and all is well and you're willing to say, but we'll have Jesus forever. Honestly, that is the attitude of many Christians. Let me enjoy my kids grow up. It's not up to me. I just tell the truth, you know. They're like, but I'll have Jesus forever. I don't give a rip. I want him now. I want him now. I could be fine here if that's what he wants for another decade. If things went the way they have been and things continued as they had been, but you can tell they're not. This COVID's going to come back with the 5G. If the Lord does not intervene with 
I, their plan is to force vaccinations on everybody. And I, you know, Celeste Solemn said, you know, I honestly believe that if you say, I want nothing to do with this, and they knock you out somehow, hold you down, force it into you, that the Lord will make it where it won't affect you. I don't believe that. I don't believe we'll be here. I, that it could happen that way, but that's not what the word says. It says, He causes all to take a mark in their right hand or their forehead so that they can buy and sell. It'll be a choice for a point. And then, as the cases go up and up, it'll become forced. They're talking about enforcing it now. But I don't believe we're going to... See, Revelation 3, 10 and 11 says, We will not even be here for the hour of temptation. And you will be spared the hour of temptation that is to come upon the whole world. What better temptation than to say, well, you can come out of your house if you will take this vaccination so you won't infect other people. See, it's at that point that it might be optional. If you don't mind staying in your house and just praying until the Lord comes, but that's still the hour of temptation. Especially if you haven't stocked up because you believed the Lord was coming. You see what I'm saying? Our God is greater than that. And His word is true. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. So anyway, uh, how did I get into all that? I think I already pleaded the blood. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm tired. Uh, I'll get to your emails when I can. I'm doing, um, there's not as many videos coming through, but I'm, um, I just don't want to stay up till the very last minute looking at them. So I, I think I'm, it. I'm done for the night. So I'll, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. You have a blessed night or blessed day if you're seeing this in the morning. And uh, I will talk to you later. Bye for now.